Hello and welcome to the International Dermal Institute and Dermalogica here in Los Angeles, California. I'm Jane Whirlwind and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our home here and tell you a little bit about what we do and share with you the curriculum and programs that are available to you as a licensed skin therapist. Here in Los Angeles, we research and develop the product line Dermalogica, which is our product line that we use at the International Dermal Institute in all of our postgraduate classes and all of our training. You can come to us and learn techniques such as skin therapy all the way through to advanced body therapy. We run over 60 classes in our curriculum on an ongoing basis. Here at the International Dermal Institute and at our training centers around the world, you can work to earn your diplomas. Our postgraduate diplomas are the standard in the industry. Our 100 hour diploma and our 300 hour honors diploma mark high levels of achievement for postgraduate education. Armed with those diplomas, you join the ranks of the most qualified and successful skin therapists around the world. And that's why the International Dermal Institute's education has come to meet the gold standard and raise the bar on the industry standards. I would like to welcome you to our website. I'd like you to log on to dermalinstitute.com and keep pace with what we're doing here and also what you should be doing in your private practices. So here at the International Dermal Institute, we're passionate about skin therapy. I've been a skin therapist for over 30 years, as a teacher, as a senior therapist, and as founder of the International Dermal Institute and Dermalogica. And so it's my pleasure and it's my passion to welcome you to the International Dermal Institute. Hello and welcome to a skin therapy classroom at the International Dermal Institute. We're going to go all the way through the elements of a core treatment that we teach here at the International Dermal Institute that has really formed the hallmark of our success. And I think will form the hallmark of your success too. As we go through the treatment, you're going to see me remove eye makeup and lipstick all the way through cleansing. We're going to do extractions, the famed International Dermal Institute massage technique, mask therapy, and Dr. Lucas. Now, as we're going through, I want you to watch the DVD all the way through, become comfortable with the steps and the routine. And then what's really great is you can go back and choose whatever segment you need to concentrate on to perfect your technique. Now, obviously, two of the main sections are going to be our double cleansing technique, where you'll be able to follow with me step by step and learn every one of the movements just as you would in one of our classrooms and our massage technique, which is going to be in real time so you can follow along and really perfect it. I want you to be the most successful skin therapist that you can be. And I know that together we can get you there. So let's begin with looking at what we're going to be using in this DVD, how we're going to set the bed up, and then we'll go right into the techniques. When clients come to a professional skin therapist, they certainly expect great treatments. But what they remember the most are the human touches and the way we made them feel welcome as a guest. We can start off by offering our client a warm steam towel. It can be infused with essential oils and herbal extracts and allows them to just wipe their hands and can begin the de-stressing process. We can serve them a beverage, such as iced water with a slice of lemon, a herbal tea or an elixir. I would not recommend serving a caffeinated beverage as it can be overstimulating at the start of a treatment. We then need to discuss with the client the consultation card. The consultation card is essential because it allows us to get a background or a landscape to the client's skin and their overall health condition. It serves as a record for progress in the future and also serves us to help design the treatment that we're going to complete in the room. In the consultation card, which should be completed by the client, we're going to look for any contraindications. We're also going to look for medication, stress level, oil secretion, nerve activity, and any specific questions of priorities they have with their skin. Okay, so let's take a look at what the kind of setup we're gonna to need to work with will look like, uh, equipment, how we're gonna set up the trolley so that you can follow along and set up your room in exactly the same way. 
At the International Dermal Institute, we have a set layout of how we dress the bed, and we call it the mummy wrap, which I'm going to share with you. First of all, ready for the client when they come into the room, we have our sponges, which are sealed, and I like to open the sponges in front of the client so that they can see that those sponges were fresh for them. And at the end of the treatment, we either dispose of our sponges, or what's a nice tip is to just give them to the client to take home, sterilize them, give them to the client, and they can use them for mask removal at home. Um, what we also have is it is a disposable bonnet, which we're going to use on our model today. A Velcro headband, which makes it really easy and a tight edge around the hairline, which you're going to need. So I'm going to pop those over here for now. And then for the bed layout, very specific, we use three hand towels and we use one twin bed size sheet. And this is a pure cotton sheet. And let me show you how we're going to, to do the drape. So now we have our client comfortably settled on the bed. Uh, this particular couch I actually lowered so that our client could get in comfortably and then I'm going to raise it so it's a comfortable treatment height for myself. What I've also done, because we're going to be demonstrating a European style massage later in the treatment which includes the back of the shoulders, I actually tucked my lengthways towel underneath the horizontal towel so there's no edges to catch on the side. So that's a tip if you're going to be working on the back of the shoulders. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the third towel that I had, I'm going to drape it across the chest area and I'm going to just tuck that into the gown and what that will do is it just protects the gown from any product that's going to come down onto the décolleté. But now we're going to wrap the client with the sheet and this is the International Dermal Institute Mummy Wrap. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one side of the sheet and we're going to just fold it over the client and make it neat as you're doing it so that everything looks picture perfect and then wrap over on this side taking the other side of the sheet just like a mummy we wrap over so it's very neat client has the upper arms protected which also keeps them warm and then at the foot of the couch we take that leftover um, sheet and we just tuck it underneath the ankles and now the client is fully protected and we have an open work area to work with. So I'm going to be taking three pieces of cut cotton for the eye makeup and lip makeup removal and what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by damping, dampening them in warm water, squeeze out any excess water so it's not too drippy and, uh, and doesn't dilute the eye makeup remover too much and then just separate them so they're easy to work with. Taking my eye makeup remover I'm going to apply a pump onto the first pad, just saturate the second one with it and then another on the third. So I'm just touching the temples and I'm just gently laying those pads over the eyes, pressing them down gently so they make contact with the mascara. And then using my third pad, I'm going to just hold the side of the mouth, I'm going to wipe over the mouth and remove any lipstick that's there, just wiping over the mouth. And I'm holding always the face with my hand, so I'm maintaining contact all the time. Once I've removed the lip makeup, I throw away that cotton pad, still maintaining contact. I'm taking one of my sponges with warm, clean water and just wiping over the mouth so the client doesn't have to taste the eye makeup remover. Now, the pads that have been on the eyes have pre-softened the makeup. I'm now going to just gently wipe from the inside out to the temple. And then you can also come around underneath the lashes and up, wiping over the lid and going to the other eye. You can come underneath the lashes and up, wiping over the eye. You can turn your pads over and just complete wiping over the eyes, coming up under the eyelashes, over the lid to the temples, pressure and off. And every movement we do, you'll see we come to the temples, pressure and off. I'm now taking my sponges, squeezing out excess moisture. I'm now going to just wipe over the eyes to make sure every residue of eye makeup 
is removed. Now with the eye and lip makeup removed, we can move in to steaming and manual double cleanse. So with our cleanser, I'm going to take a couple of pumps of cleanser, about the size of a walnut really, and then I'm just going to liquefy it between my hands. Now I'm liquefying it away from the face. Don't liquefy product over the face because if it drips, it's going to end up on the client. So liquefy the cleanser away from the client's face. I like to just pre-warm it a little bit under the steam, which just pre-warms the product, and then apply to the décolleté, the throat, the chin, the cheeks, the nose, and the forehead. And you see how I applied that over on the décolleté, the throat, the chin, up on the cheeks, down on the nose, and the forehead. So from the shoulders, we're coming across the décolleté, up on the throat, over the chin, scissor the mouth, and between the eyes, coming up the nose, and circle the eyes three times. One, two, and three. Now if you noticed, those three circles, the first circle came over the eyebrows, the second circle came center of the forehead, and the third circle came up to the hairline. So that's the spreading movement, and we do it three times. So again, across the décolleté, a lot of clients have uh, makeup preparation, sunblock or fragrance on the décolleté, so you must include it in the cleansing. Up on the throat, over the chin, scissor the mouth, come between the eyes, one, two, three, temple frictions, one, two, three, and down. Third and last spreading movement from the shoulders, across the décolleté, up on the throat, over the chin, scissor the mouth, up on the nose, come between the eyes, circle the eyes, one, two, three temples, one, two, three, and down. That, we, now we've spread the cleanser over the entire décolleté and face, we're ready to begin the actual cleansing routine. The first movement is roll patting. From the shoulders and from below the collarbone, this is the terminus area where lymph drains back into the main lymph duct. We're coming light pressure up underneath the jaw, coming all the way across. Don't cut your movement short. Don't stop here when you should be coming all the way over to really under the ear. That's across once, come all the way back for the second roll patting and all the way back for the third. When we come to this side, left side of the face, we slide back and we're going to begin a jawline movement that is fantastic for lymph drainage. We're coming all the way from in front of the ear, across the jaw, all the way to the other side. But let me show you that movement in detail. If I just turn our model's face, I'm coming from in front of the ear. This is where the anterior auricular lymph nodes are. Posterior auricular lymph nodes behind the ear, anterior auricular lymph nodes in front of the ear, and the submandibular lymph nodes along the jawline. Lymph drains along the jaw to the anterior lymph nodes and down to the terminus. So this movement, I'm sliding back, I'm sort of hugging the jawbone, the mandible. It's the strongest bone in the body, so you really don't have to worry about hurting the client. I'm pressing back to the ear and I'm opening Opening, that's a linking move coming forward. I'm not putting pressure coming forward. The pressure is back to the ear. Open coming forward, back to the ear. And you'll feel the lymph nodes under the jawbone, the submandibular lymph nodes, sort of popping against your index fingers. So back, open, back, open. Fantastic for a client that gets breakout in the jawline area. Now when you come to the chin, it gets a little tricky, watch. I haven't changed my, my direction, but now I'm pressing back to the left ear, open, coming forward, back, open, back, open. And you link this together. So watch, I just do a little swing movement where I'm reaching the chin, pressing back, and that's what it looks like when you perfect it. Come all the way back to the ear because a lot of clients get breakouts just before the ear. Three times that jawline movement, Slide forward, chin frictions over the chin with your thumbs. Now I'm coming, frictions, pressure is up, 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 up. 
coming over to the sides of the mouth, include the upper lip. A lot of clients get small comedones along the upper lip line area. So chin frictions, turn the hands, outer cheeks, one, two, up to the temple, three, four, five, six, other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, don't break contact, slide over to the temples. Always come to the temples between your movements. Inside cheeks, lift one, two, three, four, five, six. Pressure is coming up, relax going down, but it's a light pressure, remember. Six cheek move, inside cheek movements. Now the nose. Cross over the thumbs, lift your fingers up off the face. Don't leave the fingers on the face, it's too claustrophobic. Lift up your fingers. Now I'm supporting the nose with one thumb. I'm using the pad of my other thumb to just circle down the nasal groove, sides of the nose. This is where really almost everyone has microcomedones, so we need to soften that area. Now reverse, support with, the, with your one thumb and work the other side of the nose. But don't work the nose sides together because the client feels they can't breathe. And then top of the nose, very light, coming up between the eyebrows. Pause for a second. A lot of clients break out between the eyebrows. Come up, circle frictions to the hairline. Fingers on, circle frictions over the hairline, between the hairline and the eyebrows, over the forehead. Coming over to the temples, circle, pressure, and off. Okay, so neat and off. Now, we've thoroughly completed our first cleanse. I'm going to remove that cleanser with warm water, clean sponges, and then we're going to go through the whole thing again in our second cleanse, okay? So now, removal. I'm going to use my sponges. I'm going to mimic the sort of movement and direction that we used for our cleansing. I'm always keeping contact with the client. Can you see that? I'm holding with my hand. I'm not leaving the client and coming back. I'm holding, I'm always touching the client. Even if I have to take both hands off, you'll notice I gently lean forward so the client feels contact with me. So now I'm using my sponges, I'm removing the cleanser. Thoroughly remove the cleanser. Most clients complain that they don't feel clean after a skin treatment, which is crazy. We should be making sure that not only is their skin very clean, they feel really clean. And there's nothing worse than leaving the skincare center feeling that you were not cleansed properly or there's a residue of cleanser left behind the ears so come up over the chin jawline down on the nose removing all the cleanser and at this stage if you need to retuck the hair you can certainly do that remember we put the fastening of the headband at the top so we could easily do that but let's now move into exactly the same thing the second cleanse you always cleanse the skin twice once is not enough because we have so much uh, with debris makeup pollution on the skin a double cleanse is absolutely critical for a good treatment so now again I'm spreading the cleanser under the steam not over the face I'm applying to the decollete, the throat, the chin, the cheeks, down on the nose, and the hairline. That's application of the product. Now we go into the spreading movement. From the decollete and the shoulders come across, up, over the chin, scissor the mouth, come between the eyes, circle one, two, three, temples, one, two, three, and down. Second spreading up over the throat over the chin scissor the mouth between the eyes one two three temples one two three and down third and last spreading movement over the decollete up on the throat over the chin scissor the mouth between the eyes circle one on the eyebrow two mid forehead three at the hairline temple one two, three, and down. Now the product is spread, we begin the actual cleansing. Roll patting from the shoulders, from below the collarbone, all the way across, three times. All the way across, three times. Slide up and over, jawline movement, pressing back to the ear, opening coming forward and a cleansing routine the speed is quicker than a massage routine 
We're stimulating lymph drainage, not blood flow. We're cleansing against the grain of the skin to make extractions easier from the follicles, coming all the way to the ear, chin frictions. Over the chin, sides of the mouth, upper lip, and then turn the hand sides of the cheeks. Two, three, four, five, six. Other side, one, two, three, four, five, six. Don't break contact. Inside cheeks, one, two, three, four, five, six. Nose, lift up the fingers, one side of the nose at a time. Top of the nose, pause between the eyebrows. Come up to the hairline, fingers on when you reach the hairline. Finger frictions over the forehead, working over to the temples, pressure and off. Then taking our sponges and fresh water from our second water bowl, we would remove. And then once we have all the cleanser removed, we've thoroughly cleaned the skin with our double cleanse, we're ready to really take a good look at the skin and go right into skin analysis. At the International Dermal Institute, we like to be very methodical about our skin analysis. And we actually divide the face up into zones so that we can cover each section really carefully. So instead of darting all over the face when you're doing an analysis, really be methodical and cover each section of the face very methodically so that you can really look and see what is happening with the skin. So I've checked with our client today. She's not light sensitive. I'm going to just put the light on away from the face tell the client I'm going to move it in and move it in over the skin now I can look through the lamp and I can actually see what is going on with the skin and as I'm checking the skin I'm actually going over it with my fingers with my thumbs and my fingertips I'm feeling with my fingertips and we have an expression at the International Dermal Institute that we like to see with a feeling hand and feel with a seeing eye and what we mean by that is we should be able to run our fingers over the skin and really be able to detect anything under the skin that isn't visible and we also need to be able to look at the skin and be able to see something that isn't necessarily felt and that could be an area of pigmentation for example as I go over the skin I'm moving over the face I'm looking for areas that I'm going to want to extract I'm looking for areas that I may want to apply a different serum to. When we come to uh, later with our serum applications, I'm feeling every inch of the skin and I'm going to discuss what I'm seeing with my client. This isn't a silent part of the treatment. I'm going to be talking to my client. And you may even want to have a handheld mirror so the client can look at their skin as you're indicating areas. This is going to help us form our roadmap for the treatment and help us discuss with our client how to best take care of their skin at home and maintain the results that we will have achieved in the professional skin therapy treatment. So based on the products that you're using in your treatment room, you would select the exfoliant that's correct for the skin condition. So today I'm going to use, as I said, a microfoliant. It's a powder. And I'm going to mix it up with a little bit of water in a cup. And bear in mind, as we said earlier, everything that we um, apply to the skin in a professional treatment would either be applied with the hands in the spreading movement, or obviously if it's a spray, we would, we would spritz it on. Um, if it is a powder or a mask, a lotion or a cream uh, form of mask, we would apply all of those with a fan brush. So just mixing up our microfoliant. Again, we can put iPads on, but if you sense that you want to come closer to the eyes, let's say you have seen milia or you have seen congestion there, you may not want to use iPads at this stage. Just put your exfoliant on, then we'll put the iPads on prior to using the electric brushes. So again, I've mixed up my, my product, my exfoliant, away from the face using my fan brush. I'm just going to touch the client so she knows I'm going to approach the face and painting on really lightly and fairly rapidly. Remember, in a professional treatment, we're working to time. So we do need to make sure we've got enough time spent on the areas of the treatment where we are touching the skin. 
Um, and then anything which is a product application, we need to be able to move fairly quickly, get the product onto the skin thoroughly, coming down the nose, across the upper lip. But just because we're working rapidly doesn't mean that we're not being neat. Under the chin, that's an area that we often miss. So check that by leaning under the chin, down on the throat. So we've applied our microfoliant. I'm now going to place eye pads on because we are going to be using the brushes. I'm using a two inch gauze square, dampening it with a little bit of distilled water. I'm opening up the eye pad. See, this is an International Dermal, Te Dermal Institute technique. We don't use cotton as eye pads because you'll be picking little bits of filament out of your eyelashes if you're the client for the rest of the day. We take our gauze, we've dampened it, we twist it in the middle in what we call the butterfly wrap, and then just telling the client I'm placing eye pads over the eyes, I'm just going to place that neatly over the eye area. Today I'm going to be using the flat uh, the flat brush and the small brush. Before we use these, we first dampen them in water, and that's very important. You don't use the brushes dry. They're dampened in water, and then we keep a sponge in our other hand to catch any drips. I then take my brush holster, slot the brush in, and you'll hear it click in, okay? And make sure you hear that click. I'm then going to switch on the electric brushes. And this particular model has an on-off switch on the handle, which makes it really useful because it uh, allows us to control the application as we're working instead of keeping coming back to the base. One common mistake with electric brushes is people use them too slowly. If they're rotating too slowly, when you go to put them on the face, it sort of stops. So make sure you're working with it fast enough. Don't be nervous about it. You're controlling the pressure, okay? And keep a sponge in your other hand. Make sure you lift the cord away from the client, using your sponge to catch any drips. And remember, you don't have to keep moving your hand in a circular motion because the brush is rotating in a circular motion. Coming across. Keep it moving all the time. Don't stay still in one spot because you'll find that is where you can build up irritation coming across the forehead. You can easily see the areas that you've treated. You felt in your skin analysis areas that needed maybe extra treatment. When you've finished with the one brush, remove it, place it ready for sterilization. Pick up the small brush, damp it. Hear it click in the holster. And this is really great to do the nose area. Keep your sponge handy to make sure that you're protecting the nostril and obviously control your brush really well. You don't want to go into the nostril. I say that because it's a really common occurrence when you're first learning how to handle the brushes. Coming around the mouth, up the nose. Now this is the area where we can just remove the eye pads. Keep your sponge handy to just protect the actual eye area. But you can come pretty close to the eyes because remember, if you did see any milia there or congestion, you definitely want to exfoliate that area coming around the eyes. And when you can see that you've completed the face, switch off, remove the brush, replace the holster, and then just remove the exfoliant in exactly the same manner as you saw me remove the cleanser. So I'm going to choose my disincrustation solution. Um, I'm just going to pour a little bit into the disposable cup and I'm going to actually foam this up. This is a foaming disincrustation solution which is rather unique but it does make it really easy to apply and it makes it uh, stay on the skin without dripping. This one is designed to foam. Um, it's got uh, plant-based uh, extracts that foam up. And now that I've foamed it up with my mask brush, I'm going to apply to the areas that I know I'm going to be extracting. So I'm using on the T-zone area, and then coming down and applying to the nose area. And I'm actually going to use vacuum suction in the T-zone today which helps loosen debris. Vacuum suction doesn't actually remove the comedones itself, but it helps to loosen them ready for manual extractions. So my disincrustation solution is on the skin. Because it's foaming, it's not dripping at all. I'm then going to get my vacuum suction 
ready to use. So here I have my attachment for vacuum suction. I've got a variety of glass ventuzies to use. So let's start with the flat bell. We wrap the cord around our hand, hold the ventuze attachment rather like a pen as if we were writing, and we begin by just using the vacuum suction on the T-zone. So I'm just coming up, and I'm just releasing the vacuum with my finger. You'll see. Up, and we go in one direction only and we follow the direction of lymph because vacuum suction is an electrical method of lymph drainage. Coming over, coming between the eyebrows, I'll exaggerate the movement so you see it lift off, down the sides of the nose. If you noticed any particular areas of congestion around the eyes you could move there. Then we're coming down on the chin. This helps just loosen any debris before extractions. And then switching over, putting the flat bill ready for sterilization, going to the needle nose ventus. This, remember, doesn't have a hole. We work around the nasal groove. To break the suction, we use our finger. Go around small circles. Break. Top of the nose. Break. You can use it in the crevice of the chin. Break. Upper lip. Break. 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 Break corners of the mouth, break. So you can use it in small areas, break, if you've just got a small bit of breakout, or you can use it in little circles if it's an area like the nasal groove. So once we've finished our vacuum suction, with the disincrustation solution still on the skin, dilating the follicles, we've prepared the skin for manual extractions. At the International Dermal Institute, we use manual extraction techniques. We don't use comedone extractors. They can mark the skin, they can damage the skin, and the use of extractors and even lancets is often not legal in certain areas. So as we turn the face, I'm going to position the lamp. I've already done my skin analysis. I know where extractions are going to be. I'm going to come in to the side, keep my fingers slightly apart, and I'm going to come in and just slightly wiggle wiggle, wiggle. And we're just rolling the skin gently and then wiping off any debris, okay? So come in, position, wiggle, 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 and just wipe off any debris. Now if, as you're working on the skin, it's a comedone and it's not coming out easily, change the position of your fingers. Come in, wiggle and wiggle, and then just wipe. You can come around, try from, a di from different angles. Make sure you're working on a non-infected lesion. Just see it wiggling up right there. If it's an infected lesion, we're not going to attempt to extract it. What we're going to do in that circumstance is we're going to use direct high frequency. And there you can see the impaction just sliding out. Don't force from one angle. Come around. Now remember, you can move around the bed. You can come to the side of the bed if it's easier for you to work. And we're extracting in the direction of the hair growth. Remember how the hair comes down? And we just wiggle, 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 slightly apart, and remove. When it comes up to the nose area, let's look at the nose, because that's a slightly different situation. When we do extractions around the nose, we're going to support the side of the nose with our thumb. We're going to come slightly to the side of the couch and we're going to press up on either side. So let me just show you. We're going to hold the nose so that we don't push the nose onto the face. We're going to just put one finger underneath the nostril. Client can breathe. Still breathe through the nose because we're only working on one side of the nose. Come in with our finger on the other side and we're just going to wiggle, wiggle. And you see how that nasal groove just pops up. And we're going to wiggle wiggle and just come all the way down. As I press, you see the nasal groove just pop up and impactions just slide out. So that's the sides of the nose. Now as you're working on the nose, 
sides of the nose just pop up like that. There may be very minimal extractions, there may be a lot. But also look carefully, the top of the nose, we're actually going to come in and go either side. And it's almost like taking each follicle separately. Same movement, just roll, roll, roll over the top of the nose and then work over to the other side of the nose. And again, come to the slightly to the side of the bed. Move the lamp in. Support the nose with the one thumb. Come in with the other underneath. Bend the nose slightly over. With your other finger, come in and just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And just squeeze and you'll see the impactions just pop up in the nasal groove. When you've finished with your extractions, we cover the whole skin. Allow in your treatment time about eight minutes in order to do extractions. We then would wipe over the skin with our sponges and clean water. And we would then also follow with a post-extraction solution, which would be a sanitizing solution designed for the purpose. So we would come in with our sponges. We would wipe over, because remember, we left our disincrustation solution on. So we would wipe over the skin and then we would come in with cotton, always two pieces, so we work in unison together. Our post-extraction solution, which is a sanitizing antibacterial solution, just dampen it down and then we would come in with both of our cotton pads wipe over the skin. If you're using high frequency, direct high frequency can be used after extractions and we would make sure that the area is completely sanitized, has an antibacterial covering and then we would be ready to go into the touch therapy or the massage portion of the treatment. We begin the massage portion by applying an essential oil underneath the massage cream. We don't use essential oils to massage with, but we do use them as an additive to the massage cream. And so what I'm going to do is I've selected um, an additive of essential oils. This is a 20% strength and it's basically in a, in a base of, uh, of vegetable oil, but it is a eucalyptus, lavender and sandalwood blend to calm the skin. So I'm just going to take a few drops, five or six drops of this essential oil. Just pat it between the hands, spread it lightly, don't rub. And then because this is highly aromatic, it's an essential oil, I'm just going to hold it over the client's face for a few seconds, allowing them to inhale the aroma and then I'm going to just spread it onto the skin and very, very gently just with a fingertip motion, just apply. And then pressure at the temples and off, that's just an application of essentials. We're now going to go into our application of massage cream and the International Dermal Institute Facial Massage. So I'm applying about the size of a walnut to my hand. We work with water-soluble massage creams. Um, you'll find some product lines use oil-based massage creams that are not water-soluble and the problem is you can't remove them from the skin effectively. You have to use an alcohol on the skin which can dry it or a soap-based solution to remove the massage cream which quite honestly defeats the point of the treatment and the results that we've already got. So this is a water-based massage cream and what makes that also very, very efficient is that if you need to liquefy it some more, you can just add some more water to your hands. So I've spread the massage cream over my hands. I'm now going to open up the drape so that I can reach down the upper arms. I'm going to apply the massage cream to the décolleté, to the upper arms, to the throat, to the chin, to the cheeks, and down on the nose. But I'm not applying to the forehead. Because as we spread the massage cream, it's going to liquefy. That will spread to the forehead. If I apply massage cream to the forehead, we end up spreading it to the hair. It's just too much massage cream. So let's go through the movements each at a time. Follow along with me and then we'll put it together and you'll have a complete 20-minute European face massage.
So let's begin then with the spreading movement. This time it's from the elbows, okay? From the lymph nodes in the crook of the elbow, we come up on the arms, across the décolleté, up on the throat, over the chin, scissor the mouth, between the eyes, one, two, three, temple, one, two, three, and down. And this spreading movement is the same movement whenever we spread, but this time, because it's the massage, we're just making it slower, more rhythmic. One, two, three, one, two, three, and down and you keep your hands in contact. Now obviously your nails must be short when you're going to be doing skin therapy but for a European style face massage they absolutely have to be short because you won't be able to complete the movements correctly if they are long. If your nails are beyond the end of your fingertips you will find yourself compromising the movement and it will not be as effective. So now we come down. Now we're going to spend seven minutes on the décolleté upper arms, shoulders, upper body, and 13 minutes on the face. So we time ourselves. You will develop your own sense of timing, but time yourself so that you can get that timing correct. So now I'm coming down on the upper arms. I'm using a squeezing technique on the bicep. I'm coming around with my fingers underneath the upper arms, down to the elbow. Come around the elbow. If there's any dry skin on the elbow, the massage cream is fantastic for hydrating that. Come up, squeeze down, squeeze the bicep, come up. Come around the deltoid. Come into that area um, right here where the arm connects to the torso. Come around with thumbs. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually not using my fingers as much. They're sort of gliding along, but I'm using my thumbs in a kneading motion underneath the shoulders. I'm coming into the trapezius muscle. I'm feeling for any tension there. I'm coming across. I can now turn my hands coming around the shoulders. I can then what I'm doing is I'm going to do knuckling. I'm actually bending my hand underneath the shoulder and I'm using the knuckles of my hand right into the trapezius. Now sometimes you'll see the client's shoulders lift up. Just say to the client, just relax, put your full weight on my hands and you'll see the shoulders come down. So just come around and we're doing petrissage. The European massage combines the movements of petrissage, effleurage, to potment and frictions. Effleurage or our smoothing movements, petrissage is a kneading movement. And now we're coming in and we always follow petrissage with an effleurage because that smooths it out. So it's a combination of a movement that stimulates lactic acid removal from the muscle and then smooths out that feeling coming up the back of the neck. Now, hold the head steady with one hand, and with the other hand, what I'm doing is I'm coming around, I'm using my fingers in a fingertip motion on those upper cervical vertebrae, coming right up to the occipital ridge, one hand and then the other, come up, now come all the way up to the base of the occipital ridge, come into those hollows at the back of the head. And if you can imagine or you can feel now on your own head, come into the back of your head, right where the hairline is, you're going to feel hollows. There are five. The outer two hollows are tucked behind the ears on the occipital ridge and they link with the nerve endings that connect to the ears and the sides of the face. So if you have any ear problems, they'll be a little sensitive. The next two hollows coming in towards the center of the head at the back link with the frontal sinuses, the eyes, and the high teeth. So any sinus problems or eye strain, those will feel sensitive. And then the third point in the very center of the occipital ridge, the 
Now we've removed the massage cream from the skin. It was water soluble, so we've removed it with very warm water and sponges, or you can use a steam towel if you prefer. We're ready to go in and apply the mask. At this stage of the treatment, the client's body temperature begins to drop. They're very relaxed, they've received the massage, and so before we apply product to the skin, we need to cover the upper arms. So at this stage, just cover up the upper arms, make sure that the client's warm, and then we can select the mask we're going to use. You may choose a specialty mask, such as an oatmeal mask, a contour mask, or even a paraffin wax mask for some clients. But what we're going to show today in the classic treatment is a mask application of a clay, a cream, and a gel. So the clay-based mask is the one that will set and dry. So I'm applying that first. That gives it the longest time to dry. As I'm applying the other two masks, it's busy beginning to set down on the nose, areas where we've got congestion. You already have in your mind a sort of a map of the face because we've done our analysis. The chin area, you know where those breakouts were. The next one I'm going to apply is the gel. And the reason that would be next is because once I've applied the gel around the eye area, I can put the eye pads on, the client can relax. So damp my brush. I always like to just sort of whip the mask around with the brush because that just makes sure there's no lumps or anything there. So just applying around the eye area, coming over the eye area, right underneath. This is where clients become dehydrated. Now obviously you want to make sure you're working with a product that is suitable for use around the eyes with no fragrance or artificial color which could potentially irritate the eye area. And then I'm just going to do over the mouth area and the lips. And then I'm going to place eye pads onto the eye area. Again, our two inch gauze square, damp it down open it up and in the butterfly wrap, twist in the middle, touch the client's head, place onto the eyes. And now I take my third mask, my cream, and I like to start mask application always from the hairline and work down. Because once you start applying to the throat area, when you have to move up to the, to the face, if you have to turn the head in any way, if you've got a specialty mask on the throat area, such as a contour or an oatmeal or a paraffin wax, you don't want to keep moving the head because it will lift off the throat. So I like to just get into the habit of applying from the hairline down so that the cheeks are now going to have cream mask applied to them, always in a very, very neat application. And if you notice there was congestion right in front of the ear, you could have applied your clay right in front of the ear. You know, be specific as to what the skin condition is. And then under the chin, make sure you don't miss that area. Onto the throat. And down onto the décolleté. You may like to warm your masks. If you warm product for a client, only ever warm the jelly cup amount. Don't warm the whole tube or the whole bottle because continually doing that will potentially break down the viscosity of your product. So just warm the amount that you need. And then once your product is applied neatly, we can then leave that on for, according to your manufacturer's directions, but usually about 10 to 15 minutes. While the mask is setting, we could be doing a hand massage, we could be doing a foot reflexology, we could be making sure that the client is comfortable, making sure our trolley is prepared, complete the consultation card, ready to discuss the home care regime that's going to maintain the results of the treatment. And then once the mask is set and time it with the clay mask, that's the one that needs to dry, we would then remove with sponges and warm water.
We've removed the mask after it's set and we're now ready to go into the hydration portion of the treatment. One of my favourite pieces of equipment in the treatment room is the Dr. Lucas Pulverizator. It allows us to pulverise liquids onto the skin, gives a really deeply hydrating result and smells wonderful when we customise it with a botanical mixer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just cover up the upper arms and I'm going to just cover up the hair with the towel here. Okay, we've got that all covered. I'm going to hold a sponge in my one hand, ready to catch any drips. It's going to feel very, very wet on the face, but it's a wonderful result. I'm going to customize with my botanical mixer, which is my hydro essential oil. It's a water-soluble essential oil. Essential oils can be solubilized in oil or alcohol or water. This is in water. I'm then going to place the tube into the beaker. And now the Dr. Lucas is pulverizing that liquid onto the skin. I hold my sponge to catch any drips. This is a wonderful technique for really deeply cleansing any residue of product on the skin. It hydrates the skin. It leaves the skin looking really moist and calm. The mixer I've put in is soothing, so it's going to reduce any redness. And when we've finished with the whole beaker, which is going to be about three minutes, we then would go in to our moisturizer and sun protection stage. At this stage, if you had not used the Dr. Lucas, you could just use a pressure spray toner, an echo spray, or even a spritz toner over the skin. You want the skin to be moist before you apply your moisturizer or your sunblock. If the skin has any dry spots, it's not going to absorb the moisturizer carefully and evenly enough. And you need to educate your clients that for home care as well. Skin should be damp before you put on a treatment product. You could then apply, if you have any remainder of your ampule or your serum, this could go underneath the moisturizer. It certainly is active and gives a great result. We put our active hydrosol in the Dr. Lucas, so that is still on the skin. We would then go in to our moisturizer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use a tinted moisturizer. And underneath, I'm going to use a little bit of a hydrating booster, which is the equivalent of an ampule. I just want to use this in any areas that I noticed dehydration. And I especially noticed that just on the outside cheek areas. Not through the center of the face, I did not see it there, but I'm just using it on the outside cheek areas. Custom your booster application to that area that you saw in the diagnosis or the consultation that needs it. And then taking a tinted moisturizer. I like to complete my treatments with a tinted moisturizer, provided your manufacturer tells you they can be applied straight after a treatment. This has a full sunblock in it. It has no artificial color in it. And it is designed to apply right at the end of a treatment. So again, with the spreading movement, we just put our tinted moisturizer on. If this was a sunblock or it was a regular moisturizer, it would be the same application. Same spreading movement that we've been using all the way through. And that just spreads it evenly. Any areas that need evening out, just go over with your fingertips, pressure and off. If you want to apply a specific eye product, you certainly can do this. A little bit on the back of the hand, take it onto the middle and ring finger and then just apply with a firm pressure, a little bit of a circle around the eye. If the skin looks overly moist and you feel you want to just blot it, take a Kleenex separate it into two and we're just going to blot the skin with the Kleenex. Fold the edge so there's no little filaments to get caught over the nose. Fold the bottom edge, place onto the skin, blot evenly, lift both Kleenex at the side of the face, lift it off cleanly Now we've completed the treatment, we're going to sit the client up, 
we're going to then remove any residue of massage cream that we didn't get from the back. I'm going to take my steam towel, which I have ready, just make sure it's not too hot. And then in order to remove product with the steam towel, just drop the towel over your hand, twist it in the back so you've got a flat surface to work. And don't just take the towel and dab at the client. And then very smoothly and evenly remove any residue of product. Check everything. We're then ready to take the client where she can dress, get changed, complete the consultation card, ready for us to enter that in her record card, and discuss home care programs with the client to maintain the results of the treatment at home. At the end of the treatment, it's important to complete our consultation card and then complete a face mapping analysis with the client, outlining to them things we noticed during the treatment about their skin. This is going to form the basis of their home care regime, and it's absolutely vital that the client understand what products they should be using at home and how to use them to maintain the results we've worked hard to achieve in the treatment room. We would then outline to the client any areas of specific concern that we noticed during the treatment and analysis. The best way to educate a client on home care is to show the product application ourselves. Make sure the client understands not just which product to use, but how to use it when they get home. Walk through step by step the products that you're recommending. And remember that home care is really not an option for a client. It's vital in maintaining the results that we have worked together to achieve. Show the client the areas of the skin you wish them to apply a product to and exactly how to use it. They're going to be working as our partners with their home care regime in getting their skin into the optimum condition it can be. Once we've determined the regime the client's going to be using at home and the client understands how to use it, it's then appropriate to put the products in a bag and include any educational literature that we want them to take home with them. This allows them to follow along at home with the program that we've determined together. Make sure to include the face map or the analysis sheet because that will form the foundation of the program. The client's going to easily be able to understand what we would like them to do and work with us as our partner, looking after their skin at home to make sure we can get it into the optimum health condition possible. Always include your business card or any personal message that you wish to write to the client or reminder points and rebook the client for the next appointment before they leave.